You've probably noticed how smart glasses have been slowly evolving. Cameras got better, voice control got smoother, and some even added simple on-screen prompts. They've been cool accessories, sure, but not something that changes how you see the world. Well, that's starting to shift. Meta's been quietly working with Essilor Luxotica, the company behind Ray-Ban, on a new generation of smart glasses and credible reports from folks like Mark Gurman at Bloomberg and Android Central say dual-screen prototypes are already being tested. Now, these aren't full-blown holographic glasses that'll beam 3D objects into your living room, but they're definitely a big step up from the current monocular setup where everything pops up in just one eye. Basically, instead of a single micro display like on the current display model, the upcoming ones will have one per lens. That means real binocular overlays, info appearing across both eyes, giving a more balanced, natural, and immersive view. Think navigation cues, notifications, or your AI assistant floating neatly in your field of vision, not just awkwardly off to one side. And that's what's exciting. This approach creates a more centralized and visible image, something analysts say brings it much closer to true AR. You're not getting volumetric holograms, but you're definitely getting richer contextual information layered over the real world. Now, this is where Meta's plan starts to come into focus. Meta's first true consumer-ready AR glasses, codenamed Artemis, are still planned for around 2027 or 2028. Those will be the real deal with full 3D overlays, spatial mapping, and true augmented visuals. But before we get there, insiders say Meta is fast-tracking a new dual-display Ray-Ban model for an earlier debut, possibly around Meta Connect 2026. And in tech years, that's practically right around the corner. Meta's AR roadmap has always been designed in phases. Right now we're in the display glasses phase, lightweight smart glasses that show limited information and depend on your phone for most of the processing. The next step, which is exactly where these dual display Ray-Bans fit in, is the enhanced display phase. That's where visuals start appearing more naturally and across both eyes, giving a balanced, more immersive experience, but still short of full AR. And beyond that comes the real destination, Project Artemis. Meta's moonshot for complete AR immersion still on track for 2027 or 2028. By the time Artemis arrives, Meta wants an entire ecosystem ready. Hardware perfected through Ray-Ban iterations. AI assistants that feel conversational and intuitive. Input methods refined through neural band and voice. Developers building AR experiences via Meta's SDKs. And social integration that makes these glasses more than just tools, but extensions of the digital life people already live in Instagram, WhatsApp, and Facebook. Now, let's get back to our dual display glasses. So what's fueling this push? Well, competition is heating up. A handful of Chinese companies are already ahead in binocular AR displays. So Meta wants to catch up and set the bar higher for design and usability, especially in Western markets. The partnership side of this is fascinating too. Meta and Essilor Luxottica have already gone all in together. And in 2025, Meta even took a minority stake in Essilor Luxottica to tighten their collaboration. That's not just about keeping the Ray-Ban name, it's about making sure Meta has long-term access to world-class eyewear design and lens tech. About display, SHOT, in partnership with Loomis, is expected to supply the display optics for the upcoming Meta Ray-Ban dual display glasses as well. Based on SHOT and Loomis' established role as the waveguide providers for Meta's current glasses, using their geometric reflective waveguide technology for efficient, compact, full-color displays, industry analyses indicate they'll continue in this capacity. Their tech supports wider field of view and dual eye configurations with SHOT's specialty glass manufacturing enabling scalable production for such upgrades. Powering all this, Qualcomm's rumored to supply an upgraded Snapdragon AR1 Plus chip, optimized for lightweight AR glasses. Compared to earlier versions, it's said to handle on-device AI better, which could mean smarter, faster responses without needing to ping your phone as much. It should also help with battery life. Leaks hint at around six to eight hours of active use, with the charging case adding over 30 hours in total. Not bad for something you wear on your face all day. On the input side, Meta's keeping things consistent. 
Voice commands are still key, and that neuroband, the wrist-worn EMG device that picks up subtle muscle movements, is going to be even more important here. Imagine scrolling or selecting something in AR just by slightly twitching your fingers. That's the kind of hands-free control Meta's banking on, and since these are Ray-Bans, style and practicality matter, the open-ear audio setup, those tiny speakers built into the arms, will return, probably with clearer output and better directionality. You'll also get a 12 megapixel camera, similar to the current model but possibly with better HDR or improved zoom for sharper captures. And of course, the glasses will retain the multi-mic array for voice input and clearer calls. Now, while Meta hasn't confirmed any new sensors yet, it wouldn't be surprising if they slipped in something extra, maybe eye tracking or improved inertial sensors for smoother AR overlays. That would make sense, especially if they're serious about transitioning these glasses from smart wearable to a more advanced AR device. One thing we haven't talked about yet is the practical stuff, the things people always worry about once the hype settles, and the big one is Privacy. Meta knows this is a huge sticking point, especially with a camera on your face, so don't be surprised if the dual display model doubles down on transparency indicators, stricter recording lights, and maybe even hardware level privacy toggles. Um, it has to be more reassuring than the current models if Meta wants these glasses to feel normal in public. But the real question is, what will they actually do differently? Because right now, the display model gives you simple stuff, notifications, calls, camera, voice assistant, but with dual displays, things get more dynamic. Imagine walking in a new city and seeing turn-by-turn -turn directions right in front of both eyes, or reading contextual notes while filming. It's subtle, but that shift from just one eye to both eyes could make digital overlays feel more real, and less like a gimmick. Also, Meta's pushing deeper into AI integration. That's not a coincidence. When these glasses start delivering true AR overlays, you'll need an assistant that understands context, what you're looking at, where you are and what you need. That's why Meta's been integrating AI across everything, because eventually it'll live inside your glasses, not your phone. If everything goes according to plan, 2026 could be the year AR finally starts to feel within reach. Not fully here yet, but close enough that you can start to see how it'll fit into everyday life. Would you actually wear dual display Ray-Bans as your everyday glasses if they look just like the ones now, but can show real-time info, or is it still too early for that kind of tech in public? Let me know what you think in the comments, and if there's something I missed, feel free to add it down below. Thanks for watching. Peace.